Okay, the recording has started. And this is the April 9th, 2019 Rook community meeting. We are headed towards the 1.0 release. So that will be the main focus of today. So let's, um, let's take a look at the milestone and the project as well. So we had taken a pass at uh, a lot of these issues, um, but we still have a fair amount open now. So what I wanna do is kinda maybe go through by, uh, by functional area or by storage provider and kinda get an update uh, and talk about what the risks are, what some of the long poles are, um, and see you know, how we're all feeling about the release. Uh, tra as I mentioned, Travis is not able to make it today due to jury duty. So, but he did leave a comment here in the document about um, what he thinks uh, we should be targeting for the release. Um, so we, uh, so his comment is targeting the week of April 22nd. So that gives us, I believe, two weeks here to work through uh, the various issues that we still have open and that are in scope for the 1.0 milestone and what was on the 1.0 roadmap, um, including the updates that Blaine had made recently to get the one uh, the full roadmap updated with uh, the latest thinking and planning and um, that also gives us time to work through a backlog of pull requests um, that uh, Travis just mentioned here uh, Jared um, I, I have I have one suggestion to make mm -hmm. uh, if you could please uh, go back to the milestone uh, so um, I think uh, one of the things which uh, kind of should ensure a good uh, stable release, right? It's uh, what's important for 1.0 rather than, uh, you know, all the features in the world. I think first thing which I kind of see from here is that there are a lot of features uh, which um, some of them actually, I think some bugs actually also probably features. Um, I don't see like a full triaging, like for instance, um, dynamic provisioning for NFS storage. Like I do not see whether this uh, a feature or bug, right? So I think the first thing we need to do is very simple. Just go through that list, it's 29, and just put bug or feature. Um, and then be, uh, I mean, and that's just a suggestion. Uh, then just be very, pitiless, so to speak, uh, to the features and just uh, essentially just remove them from the list. Um, and with that mean, that means that a lot of features which for CF, a lot of features for, which are for HFS, we just simply will not make it. And that is maybe fine. And that is maybe fine because ultimately um, it, we are not stopping development, right? So it's continue for 1.1 and for other, uh, you know, micro releases as well. And this is just a suggestion, but um, I, 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 what do you think? So, so if I understood that correctly, is that kind of making uh, the suggestion here that uh, for everything that's identified as a feature that uh, just to, to no longer include them as uh, explicit in the milestone? Yeah, just simply move it to like whatever the next one is so that you have this, uh, because if you want to aim for April 22nd, which seems to be a good date and we need to be on uh, on target before the uh, Barcelona uh, events, right? Uh, that means that we really need to keep just bug fixes and be very pitiless uh, uh, to the features. So we just need to, you know, just kill, kill all the features essentially. I th and so I think what this board isn't capturing is, you know, um, you know, this view at least is what's uh, what's already, you know, either uh, deeply in progress, uh, like nearing completion, or what's already in review, like what has pull requests open as well for them. So mm -hmm. from a tracking perspective, I think it would be difficult to uh, remove um, all the features from the 1.0 milestone uh, that you know have that are pretty close to being done or, you know, have a, um, 
you know, it kind of in the final phases there of, of getting merged in, um, then that would make things more difficult to, to, from a tracking perspective. I think though being judicious about, um, you know, the scope of features of ones that, you know, don't really make much sense or bring a lot of risk uh, to the, you know, to the potential release. I think that's um, something that I am, am, would be much, you know, more on board with are the ones that are, you know, kind of, haven't even started or have a lot of have a lot of risk associated with them. Yeah, I think I, I think you're right. I think if uh, of course some feature, which is by the way not marked as feature, right? So one, one thing you probably need to do is just go and mark uh, what is feature, what is not, kind of thing. And if the feature indeed is uh, kind of uh, been uh, in development for quite some time, why don't we just go ahead and uh, let it be? But if it's just not even started, or we, we kind of feel that it will take still amount of time to discuss this, etc., it's just better just kill it off and just move uh, move to the different milestone. Why why does this keep refreshing? I'm not sure the page keeps refreshing on me. Um, that's weird. Uh, it, yeah, I, I think that yeah, that it, it gets down to um, you know like at what stage or phase uh, are are these items, right? Yeah. So that's why I wanted to dig in with uh, you know go by each storage provider and kind of get an idea of um, you know where what is the status of um, of of these features here or um, these implementations and and see if there's uh, you know call out the the ones that either don't make sense or out of scope or you know, have big risks associated with them. Yeah. Um, Jared, do you know, uh, uh, similarly, I guess, the, um, <clears throat> we have the like issue and bug templates. Is there an option to have those automatically apply issue or bug labels? Yeah, I think that, I think that um, Alexander had actually done that recently. Um, Maybe, or maybe it was just a suggestion. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I thought, I thought that, he, uh, that that had come up recently. Yeah, here you go. So in the metadata for mm -hmm. each one of the templates there, um, it will apply that particular label, uh, the feature label or the bug label um, when you use okay. the template. So that is, and I think that was kind of recently. Uh, yep, here we go, 22 days ago. So that is the okay. recent change that is now in place. Um, so, you know, it didn't retroactively go and apply that to all the issues that had been open previously. Uh, but going forward, we will have those labels pretty, um, pretty consistently applied now, I, I think. Yeah, so that's a okay, good that, point. That's that, a good that's thing. Great. Yeah. yeah. Um, good. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like we, we could go through the to-do list and kick out any features that, you know, no one is working on. Yeah, I think, I think the, at a high level kind of identifying what are the issues, you know, for each storage provider here that we're, we think that there, you know, is a lot of risk or we want to call out, you know, in, in this particular context. Otherwise, you know, each, I think that, you know, there is some sense of autonomy for each storage provider of, you know, they can kind of manage some of their own tickets and, and kick some of them out that, you know, they feel uh, don't, don't make a sense of scope for 1.0. Uh, but at a high level here, you know, as a group, like calling out what the big risks are is probably my biggest, um, my biggest uh, priority now. So, uh, um, so sorry, I guess we can start with EdgeFS because that's the one of the first ones <laughs> I see. Um, so uh, Dimitri for EdgeFS, uh, let me see if yep. we can do, is this 1.0 also or? Yeah. So those are um, the, the only one which I care about uh, as far as 1.0 is a transition to beta, beta. And I think Anton is working on this. Uh, he also working on CSI for iSCSI. I think maybe end of this week, uh, we're going to have a pull request for it. And that's basically it. Um, those other uh, really features, I'm uh, actually, you can close the integration tests because we just integrated that. And, uh, yeah, they, I thought that was merged to master. Yeah, we didn't close it for some reason. Um, or maybe it was not, uh, must not, I, doesn't, I don't see it linked to the particular probably, request. He probably did not uh, uh, mention this. In, uh, is this, is this a, was there a one, um, 
issue for integration tests. Oh, like, oh, oh, oh. This is like an extended, you this know, all extended. the CRDs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so but that's, but this, this one is definitely has to be formed one one. I don't know why. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's, it's in one one. Yeah, I, I, for some reason, this view here was including one one also. Okay, I don't, okay, I, don't know. I messed up something here. So, yeah, then. So this looks good. Yeah, okay. So this one we'll skip. Um, the then, support, um, I'm totally okay not to include this into one zero, but we'll see if it. Yeah. It's, There's still some time, so if you yeah. like, as a team, want to like see how this goes, and then you can pull it out, like, because you yeah. have you have uh, um, right permissions to update tickets and stuff, so yeah. you can yeah. you're you're welcome to do that. Yeah, as far as bugs, um, I mean, we're not aware of like any critical ones, so there are like small ones which we're uh, chasing, but they're not reflected in in here yet. Okay. You know, so we're gonna in, uh, you know put few more maybe, but uh, to us, uh, EGFS is a stabilization uh, course, so to speak. So that before 1.0, we'll have a window of a um, couple of weeks uh, yep. where we're gonna be focusing mostly on fault tolerance, like restart startability of the pods, making sure that gateways are scheduled correctly, uh, high availability aspects, uh, that, that sort of things. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, you know, kind of continuing to drive the quality and reliability, um, yep. you know, towards a uh, 1.0 release. That sounds great. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a favor of that. Sounds good. Cool. Uh, Blaine, um, do you uh, have an over a high level overview of uh, like this, the uh, Ceph um, issues in for 1.0 and like the biggest risk ones? I want to do... Um, a query that is 1.0 milestone, but then also have it to do uh, labels as well. Um, <clears throat> okay, yeah, uh, I just went through the list uh, and also marked things by our feature as we're related to Ceph. Um, so yeah, it looks like there's 20, 20 open in 1.0, which might be a little unwieldy. So, yeah, sorry, I interrupted you too. I'm sorry, Blaine. You were so you were, you went through the list. Um, yeah, I went through the list, and um, some of like there are nine in review. Well, those might not all be stuff. There are many in review. <laughs> um, some in progress that we're anticipating being in review soon. Uh, the critical ones for upgrades, obviously, are actually doing the upgrade documentation. Um, Using aggregated roles to improve that upgrade is something I just grabbed uh, and started looking at yesterday. Um, the upgrade doc not working for old namespaces, that's also something that like kind of has to get done. Otherwise, as far as things that are in the to-do column, I don't think there are any things in there that um, will hold up the actual release. Do you, uh, do you think that you could take a pass with Travis this week, uh, like when he's done with jury duty to kind of um, identify some of the uh, issues here that we could um, punt uh, out of 1.0 so that we can continue converging and constraining the, the list of um, issues open still? Um, yeah, I, I may message him uh, when we're done here and uh, propose booting out some number of issues. Uh, there are uh, a, f a few features still on the to-do pile that I uh, I think were left there because someone was planning to work on them, uh, but we can sync up again on whether that's the case. Yeah, that, that sounds great, Blaine. And yeah, like uh, I can see some of them like, you know, support for dynamically resizing volumes and doesn't even have an assignee yet. Like that would be one that looks like a clear case of, uh, you know, punting out of 1.0. Right. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. And then um, uh, I was going to make another comment to you. Um, oh, yeah. I uh, thank you uh, for you had made some comments on like, um, you know, uh, adding support for adding and removing disks, um, you know, uh, in the context of, um, you know, if that's, uh, if we have time for that, or if that's converging, or, you know, um, being able to focus on quality and, and um, you know, moving towards a 1.0 that's stable. Um, so I appreciate that focus uh, that you had there. That's a, a good mentality to, um, to adopt uh, as you're trying to get a release out the door. Uh, yeah, thanks. 
Yeah. And then, so what do you, uh, so Blaine, what do you think is the biggest risk uh, in, in, uh, in these tickets here? Like uh, you had mentioned kind of the ones that are necessary, like the upgrade stuff is necessary, which I totally agree with. Uh, but what do you think is like the biggest risk that maybe we want to raise any little red flags about right now? Um, let's see. What's, uh, I think preventing multiple orchestrations at the same time uh, is something that, uh, I mean, it, it's been uh, kind of just on the verge of completion for, for a little while. Uh, so I don't, I don't anticipate it being an issue, but that's something that is critical that we have to get in before the release. Um, I'm looking through the list now. Like I, I think everything else in in review uh, or in progress, other than uh, creating upgrade documentation, could be left out if uh, if it's not done. Got it. Okay, so it sounds like uh, even though the view here has a high quantity. Of, uh, of issues that the long poles or the uh, the risky items um, seem to be well identified, and the items that we think are critical are well identified as well. So, following up with Travis and you know um, taking a, another pass here at kind of you know constraining down or cleaning up or converging on the 1.0 issues sounds sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, it, look, it looks like this is a general feature here. Uh, I don't think I was caught up on this recently. I, maybe I, uh, I missed this one. So in, uh, supporting Kubernetes 1.14, um, what is the local, what is the sta uh, updated status on, on this? And is this critical for 1.0 or what do we have to do for this? Um, I, I guess I haven't really considered that. I, I don't, I mean, I would say that it's not critical, but I think it's something that's probably kind of expected of us that we would support 1.14. Oh, and I, it, uh, it looks at this like point, the pull request is only about adding it to the test matrix. It doesn't look like there's any associated code base changes to support it, which is encouraging. Right, right. Good. That's good. Okay, that's good. That's good. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's something that... Uh, we should strive to have that it is important uh, if it I, I would say that if it doesn't make it through that that's unfortunate but that's okay like we can theoretically add that in with like 1.1 1 .1 or 1.0.1 1 .1, uh, if we need to just yeah. to say we have tested this with 1.14 and yeah, I, I definitely am encouraged that it's not like we have to update all the client go libraries or, you know, add, like do some migration or some craziness like that. If, if we were trying to work through that, I would be much, much more concerned. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. And if that were the case, given the timing, I, I think I would leave that for later. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to issues. Ah! Not all of them, just that. There you go. Oh, uh, let's see. Is, is Giannis on the call today? No, I do not see Giannis. Um, he had mentioned, uh, I think, in the dev channel that um, the uh, Cassandra items um, that there he may need to call or punt on some of those. Uh, but so we could follow up with him on that. I think that uh, we were trying to figure out what the timing was, uh, but if Travis's suggestion of converging on the week of April 22nd, then that might actually have, um, have the time that Giannis needed to converge for Cassandra as well. Um, and then with the discussion we had had about the roadmap recently on that pull request that you had, Blaine, I think that the scope, I think, is fairly well understood now. Um, so are there any other issues that anybody wanted to talk about or identify um, in the 1.0? Uh, context here before we move on. Okay. 
So uh, Blaine, I appreciate you bringing this up yesterday in Slack. Uh, so you can go ahead and um, talk about uh, release schedule stuff right now if you want to. And if you're talking, you're on mute right now, Blaine. Totally was on mute. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think we're seeing some issues now with uh, like not, not setting a defined release schedule for ourselves and uh, having, like I, I think having a, uh, a feature freeze uh, is like specifically that is something that would would help a lot having a release date and a feature freeze to say, okay, past, past this date, we're not accepting new features uh, unless they're critical or like already mostly done. Uh, and just focusing on, on bug fixes. Uh, there's a link there for a Kubernetes uh, schedule. And this is the 1.13 one. Uh, the 1.14 one is on a Google Calendar and was a little less like easy to read at a glance, but it seems like their feature freeze is actually just like four or five weeks in, which is uh, uh, kind of kind of crazy to me. I uh, the timeline that I kind of had in mind would be like having the last two weeks before the release be bug fixes only and cutting off uh, features four weeks before. So, um, and so I, I've, I've kind of gotten a little bit of exposure to this process here uh, in from the way that SIG storage, uh, you know, walks through and, and uh, you know, their set of features and scope and everything that they want to include and then how they deal with these dates. So one thing that, uh, that, you know, is probably good to clarify for everyone because it was counterintuitive for me was how you know a feature freeze uh you know what that means is kind of uh to me at least from my experience what i've so i've seen is that a feature freeze means that um that after that date you know new pr like proposals for features to be in scope for the the release uh or will no longer be accepted i i originally thought it meant that you have to be done building and implementing all your features by that date which is not okay the, just to clarify for everybody which is really important to understand it's more like after this date we won't change the scope of the milestone anymore we won't accept new features as proposals um the you know so that i think which is important which it kind of can you know sets a good constraint on the scope of the milestone uh, fairly upfront, so that you, that you can then focus on uh, delivering and converging, as opposed to continuing to have scope creep, uh, which obviously then ends up you know pushing dates back. Um, so one thing I think that really, really I think where we failed on this on 1.0, um, and you know I take uh, responsibility for this myself, is that there's, so there's so we've had, we've had a debate about uh, feature release uh, scope versus um, date, or sorry, date driven versus feature driven releases. And so, you know, we haven't really before done like a specific date we will ship here and held to that. We've kind of been like, these are the features we want and when they're ready, we'll ship. But really what we failed at, I think uh, one of the things we failed at is that we haven't had good communication and understanding amongst the community about the dates. Um, you know, I kind of like talked to Travis and, and mentioned it in casually, like at the community meetings of, oh, we're targeting this time frame, but it's not published anywhere. It's not well disseminated information of, you know, this is the date that we want to, um, you know, be done with, uh, with, with features or coding. And this is when we want to be, you know, doing a release candidate and all that stuff. That's not really talked about. So there's, when you don't have that well published, well understood, well talked about, you know, you end up in a situation with surprises for people of, oh, okay, let's, we want to ship next week. And then, you know, some people are, haven't heard anything about it and, you know, they are, you know, not ready for that at all. Um, so it's going to be, as you know, Blaine, you suggested, it's going to be more and more important that we have these dates kind of up front, which are well published and well understood that we're consistently tracking so that we can, you know, um, continually move towards uh, the release um, on the right, right uh, pace.
Yeah, good good thoughts, uh, Jared. I think it's 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 very good idea to do that. And, and Blade, so have you been through a Kubernetes release cycle, um, like for one of these milestones? Have you have you uh, have you lived through one of those? Um, I mean, I have technically lived through, but I, I have not like <laughs> witnessed and observed and and like looked to see how all the code changes are handled. No. Got it. Um, I definitely think this is a very good model, um, you know, because it sets expectations and it has things very clear uh, that people can continue to to drive towards. Um, so I think this is a good proposal that um, you know of, of a direction that we should go um, for for one dot one. Did you have other thoughts on it on on that, uh, Blaine, or anybody else? Uh, I I mean my my thoughts are, you know, to I think the Kubernetes schedule is uh, a little more defined than I, th I think we can really get at, like, especially with things like alpha one release, you know, I'm not, uh, I don't know that I necessarily want to put that for sure in like our, uh, release timeline. Uh, but just, you know, just starting to have an overall idea of like, you know, this is when we're cutting off, uh, you know, working on anything except for bug fixes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But there's, there's no way we'd be able, we don't have the infrastructure uh, or the, um, you know, manpower to, to do something of this granularity. Um, yeah, we, we definitely couldn't do that. Um, but yeah, the, the general idea of getting some dates in place of, you know, when like a code freeze should be and, you know, when the stability portion should start, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that, that totally am in support of that. Okay, um, maybe. Do you want to open an issue to track that, um, like the kind of defining that process so that we, um, we can follow up on it? Yeah, I was just kind of starting on that thought, um, maybe starting an issue and making like a proposed uh, first draft of a release. Yep. Like think, what it looks like. Yeah, I think that sounds great. Uh, can you, Blake, can you open the, uh, the issue for that? Yeah, I can do that. Cool. Thank you, Blaine. You're welcome. Uh, so Sage is not on the call, right? Yeah, I don't see Sage there. Uh, so, but Sage added a, um, in a uh, note here that is a reminder uh, for everyone who will be in Barcelona for KubeCon next month. There is also a co-located Cephalicon conference that's um, you know, in Barcelona as well, which is the, the two days before KubeCon. Actually, it's one day before KubeCon on the 19th, which is, I think, Sunday. And then the 20th is Monday, which is the day all the other co-located events are happening in Barcelona. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be a bunch of talks uh, about Rook and, of course, uh, Ceph as well. Um, you know, I think a large part of the community is going to be there. Um, so it'll be a great place to meet folks and, you know, talk about uh, Rook and Ceph, uh, specifically since it's, it's a Ceph focus. And I think that since it's a co-located event, the normal process for KubeCon co-located events is that when you register, that you need to register as well for Cephalicon um, in that process. I don't think there's a separate registration process for it, but um, I could definitely be wrong. And this link here would probably be able to correct me. Yeah, look at that, there's a registration button right there. Now, where does that go? Uh, oh, okay, so it looks like you can't, so disregard everything I've said about the registration process because it looks like there is a specific registration ability here uh, as well. I thought you had to do it through the co-located events, but- um, You can. That, you can, got it. So you have, so do you have both sure, of those I'm, options? I'm not sure how these two options are related, but you can in fact sign up for the co-located event when you register for KubeCon. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you for uh, clarifying that. Um, cool. So uh, yeah, so there's a link in the community meeting here and we also uh, added one to the announcements and general channels in Slack as well. 
so we're hoping, uh, I'm expecting to be there, and I know a lot of you folks on the call here uh, will be there as well. Um, so that'll be great to see everyone in person and, and uh, get the Barcelona week kicked off. Okay, so for uh, PRs, um, oh, by the way, an, uh, another quick, uh, quick note about KubeCon topics. Uh, so the announcements for um, the Shanghai KubeCon China 2019 uh, talks that got accepted went out yesterday, I think. Um, I don't know if the full schedule has been published or not yet, but um, people, if you had submitted talks to uh, for as a proposal for KubeCon China, then you should have gotten a notification yesterday. So hopefully some folks got some talks accepted and will be able to be in Shanghai and um, have, uh, have a good experience speaking there too. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's, uh, so the CNCF uh, reached out to us and they do, um, for each KubeCon, they do a maintainer track and we've had an intro session and a deep dive session for, for Rook as part of the maintainer track of each KubeCon. And in China, uh, at Shanghai this year, it's apparently a different venue than it was in Shanghai just last year in November. Uh, so the logistics for like number of rooms and number of parallel sessions that could be run uh, apparently is more constrained than it was last time. So they can only give one session out per, um, per CNCF project. So for Rook, we decided to do a deep dive only instead of the intro because Dimitri here on the call has a, um, a cool talk and, um, and focus lined up about uh, multi-homed networking support um, for, for, uh, for Shanghai. So we're gonna be going with the, just that deep dive talk in Shanghai, which I think it'll be really cool. Okay, uh, so we talked about the uh, 1.14 support where we saw in that pull request that it was a test matrix update only and not any code support. So um, Travis had a note here though that uh, looks like he's having trouble with it, that the 1.14 um, build looks fine when he's locally testing, I guess either with the uh, vagrant multi-node multi setup or a minicode setup but our integration test environment is failing. And so he's asking if there's anybody else that is available to investigate and take a look at that. Let me link this here. So at least we can get to it easily. So uh, the failures that are, uh, that's not a pull request. This is a pull request, which might make that easier. Let's link that too. Yeah, that uh, this build failure apparently continues to happen. So if there is somebody who enjoys looking at integration test failures, then uh, you are welcome to uh, do so. It looks sounds like help is needed there. Uh, every other milestone, or sorry, uh, Kubernetes version is passing. It looks like except for one point fourteen. So uh, if anybody has the ability or bandwidth to take a look at that, that sounds like that would be appreciated. Okay, so that's everything I had on the agenda in the community document this morning. Does anybody have any other topics for conversation that were not in the agenda document? All righty, then we, uh, if nobody else has something they want to bring up now, then we can go ahead and conclude the meeting for today. And uh, we will continue uh, following up and uh, trying to converge on 1.0, uh, targeting the week of April 22nd. All right, thanks for joining this morning, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, right. guys. Bye-bye. Thank